Hallelujah. Test. One, two, three. Amen. Amen. Why don't we just give the Lord another clap offering? Amen. It's just nice to see you, to see all of you once again. It's nice to be, you know, last week, um, a team from World International Ministries from both the North and the South. We were in, um, we were in the North Edmonton. Our, um, our ministry in Sherwood Park celebrated their first anniversary as a local church. And it was just a wonderful, wonderful celebration we had there. Um, some of us drove up on um, Saturday afternoon. Some of, us, some of them drove up on um, Sunday morning. Um, Sister Babette and I drove up on um, Saturday afternoon. We still had, a, um, we still had a, a child dedication here at about 2.30. So we were able to vacate the center probably at a little past 3, leave Calgary, out, out of Calgary by about 3.30, 3.40, and guess what um, met us? A shower of blessing. Yeah, a lot of snow, literally a white out. And um, to top it all off, the week before I had just changed our winter tires to summer tires. So needless to say, it was, um, it was an adventure. Um, that drive was an adventure, but we praise the Lord for the just keeping us safe. Um, it, was, it, was, um, it, was a little, it was a little scary. But we just thank God for his traveling mercies. Um, none, um, everybody who traveled there from the church, whether sa um, Saturday or Sunday, everybody was safe. It was a wonderful, wonderful celebration there. Um, our church in Sherwood Park is doing quite well. I believe that we had, we probably had over a hundred in attendance um, for that particular celebration. And, um, it, you know, it really, really bodes well for what God wants to do um, in that particular city in northern, um, in northern Alberta. And um, at least the drive back was, base, was um, quite good, quite safe. Um, we did not have, um, there were some, you know, we saw a lot of accidents on the road, um, some semis that were on their side and all that. Um, but uh, we praise the Lord, and I hear that... Um, some of you, you know, I hear that the, you know, the, some of you chose to um, go to church via Facebook Live last Sunday um, because of the because of the snow, and I don't really, really blame you um, for that. It was just, um, it was just a little scary, you know, and um, quite um, quite challenging to get out on the roads last um, last weekend here in um, here in Alberta. Okay, anyway. I'd like us to bow for a word of prayer before we come to the ministry of God's word. Father, we just um, commit ourselves to you today. As we look to you, we look to your word. God, we just want to ask, O oh Lord, that you would just be with us. Holy Spirit, would you, uh, would you speak to us, Lord, through the ministry of your word this morning as we open up our hearts and our minds to you today. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I'd like you to open your Bibles to 1 Peter chapter 2, verses um, 4 to 8. Um, I've entitled my message this morning, Build, Building It Right. Okay. And um, we're, going to be, uh, we're going to be looking at this, this particular passage, and we're going to be studying this passage. I, I remember... Uh, when we were still living in the Philippines, well, um, when we let we, the um, probably the almost twenty years that we lived in the Philippines, or the um, the fifteen years that Babette and I, Sister Babette and I, were married, okay, living in the Philippines. Um, especially in the city of Cebu, we, um, I think we, we transferred no less than five times. We moved house no less than four or five times. And the longest stay we had there, we lived in a compound that was owned by my family. Large compound, probably about um, one hectare, so maybe that's about two acres, a little over two acres. 
or, maybe, or more, right? Um, one, um, it's about, about a hectare, um, 10,000 square meter compound that had four large houses, okay? And um, this, was, this was owned by a sister of my grandmother. And um, these houses were built right after World War II in 1946, okay? And they were, they, were, they were in the style of the old American style plantation houses, two-story, large, um, big, big wide windows, you know, made, um, uh, you know, foundation of cement, flooring, the bottom flooring of cement, but most of it really was wood. A lot of it was um, Philippine, um, Philippine hardwood, the pillars, and, the, you know, the pillars, and, um, you know, the, the, some of those houses were, st and the, the screen door, the screens to the windows were still the old ones that were, I think, bronze or brass, you know, and um, some of the houses still had the um, still had those bronze ones that after after a while, you know, they would be turned they would turn green, because brass or bronze turns green after you know because of the oxidation, <laughs> and um, we lived in the house we lived in we lived in the house there and we stayed there for a, for a, for a, for a, for a lengthy period of time. Um, the boys basically Tono and Bruno the boys basically grew up there and then we moved out. Um, we moved out, um, I think it was about 2000 or 2001. <laughs> and um, the, the house that we lived in, okay, was well built, okay, it was very, very well built. Um, but it had an extension. The, the previous owners, the ones who lived there before us, had built an extension in the bottom part to the house where they would have, you know, that's where they would have their socials and all that. Um, I think it was a mahjong room, a poker room, a bar, and all that. But it was not built of the same material that the, that the old house was, the original house was built on. And after, after several years of living there, um, we, we, we started to notice that the extension, okay, the extension that had been built, that was probably... Um, had been built maybe 30 years after, okay, was starting to deteriorate r rather rapidly. And uh, my uncle, who was overseeing the entire compound, he comes to me and he says, Andoni, I'm going to bring in some workers here because that place is becoming a fire hazard, okay, and we're just going to tear it down, he says. We're going to tear down that extension because if not, you know, your kids are going to get hurt and it, could, it, 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 it has tremendous danger of becoming a fire hazard. So eventually some laborers came in and we tore down, the, you know, they tore down that particular extension that was built. And um, I asked him, I go, you know, I asked him, uh, he, he, had been part, he had been part of the original construction when he was still a civil engineering student. And I asked him, Tito, why, Uncle, why, why, why was this, this, this is later, okay? Why is the house still, you know, standing and st quite strong, okay? And this, or, you know, this, this one that was built almost 30 years later, why is it deteriorating so fast and it's literally falling apart? Basically, he looked at me and said, because the house was built right, this one was not built right. They cut a lot of corners, okay, in order to get this built, okay. They used um, substandard material, okay, in order, to, in, in, order to, in order to get it built. The house, when at that point in time, was um, almost 60 years old, 50 years old at least, okay, was still standing strong because it had been built right. Whereas, the other part had not been built right. I'd like to talk to you today about building your lives right. Building your lives on the proper foundation. Building your lives on the proper foundation that will not just impact your life for the present, 
in a powerful way. But it will impact your eternity as well. I'd like to talk to you about building your life. And everything about your life. Your marriage, your family, your finances, everything. On the foundation of Jesus Christ. On the Lordship of Christ. On the finished work of Jesus Christ. Placing your trust in Him. And staying true and staying faithful to Him as His follower. Because to build your life on the foundation of the Lordship of Jesus Christ, while challenging, okay, is to build your life the right way. It may not be easy. It may not be popular. It may not be celebrated by many. You may be rejected. You may be reviled. You may be ridiculed. But at the end of the day, it will always be worth it. Turn to somebody and say, it's going to be worth it. Okay. Now turn with me, please, to 1 Peter chapter 2. Verses 4 to 8. St. Peter writes here, You, turn to somebody and say, You. You are coming to Christ, who is the living cornerstone of God's temple. He was rejected by people, but he was chosen by God for great honor. And you are living stones that God is building into his spiritual temple. What's more, you are his holy priests. Through the mediation of Jesus Christ, you offer spiritual sacrifices that please God. As the scriptures say, I am placing a cornerstone in Jerusalem, chosen for great honor. And anyone who trusts in him will never be disgraced. I want, you to, I want you to underline that particular passage. Anyone who trusts in him will never be disgraced. If that's your, if that's your Bible. Okay? If it's somebody else's Bible, ask permission first. But if that's your Bible, underline it. Okay? Yes, he says, you who trust him recognize the honor God has given him. But for those who reject him, the stone that the builders rejected has now become the cornerstone. And he is the stone that makes people stumble, the rock that makes them fall. They stumble because they do not obey God's word, and so they meet the fate that was planned for them. Peter presents to us a picture here. A picture of God building a house. God building a temple. A spiritual temple. A spiritual house. And he is using us as the living stones. You know, as the building material for that house. Turn to somebody and say, you are a stone. Don't tell them you're stoned, okay? You are a stone. Okay? Two different meanings. Okay? So he's using us as living stones, as the building material that is used to build up this spiritual house, this temple that he is creating. And that those who have placed their faith in Christ as the ultimate living stone as presented here, okay, Every one of you are part of that building that he is building. Okay? Now, to be identified with Christ, to be called a living stone, means that you are in union with him, that you share his nature because he is the living stone. Okay? And that happens when you place your faith in Christ 
as your Savior and as Lord. As living stones, God is setting us in our own respective places in the building. Okay? We all have a role to play. Okay? All of us are important. You may be a big stone, you may be a small stone, you have an important part to play in the building that God is, you know, establishing, okay? that God is constructing. The goal of this temple, the goal of this house is simple, the glory of God. Okay? That this house is where God is going to be glorified, this house is where God is going to be exalted. This house is where God is going to be worshipped. And you have an important part to play. Because all of you are part of that. You are living stones that God is using. Now in the passage that we read, you know, 1 Peter chapter 2 verses 4 to 8. Christ is talked about here. He is called the living stone, rejected by man, okay, but chosen by God to be the cornerstone upon which God will build up his temple. Okay. The cornerstone. Everybody say cornerstone. Because that's who Jesus is. Jesus is the cornerstone. Now, the cornerstone simply means something that's at the head of the corner. Okay? Now, the Webster's Dictionary describes the cornerstone as a stone which lies okay, at the corner of two walls and serves to unite them. Specifically, a stone built into a corner of the foundation of an important building, an important edifice as the actual or nominal fixed starting point in the building. You know, this is in a sense a picture of the cornerstone, that large stone that you see at the bottom. Much squarer and much larger, much larger than the other stones. In ancient building practices, it was the cornerstone okay, that determined the design and the orientation of the building. In ancient building practices, it was the first stone that was laid, okay, that was considered the foundation. And because of this, it was considered the most significant stone in the structure. It set the level, it set the angle, it set the outer dimensions of the building. It had to be properly squared, it had to be properly leveled, okay, so that all the other stones would be set from it. If the cornerstone was not set properly, if the cornerstone was not established properly, okay, many things could go wrong. If the, stone was, if the stone was not set right, everything in the construction could go wrong. Problem after problem would arise. And that's why it was seen as the most important stone of the building. They would not, you know, they didn't have, they wouldn't dig deep foundations like we did, we do today. Normally, they would have the stone there, it was properly squared, they would decide where to build the building, where to build the home, okay, and the stone was set there. And from there, the other portions of the house would be or the building would be built. Now what we are presented here is this. Jesus is the chief cornerstone. He says, God is building the house. Okay? God is building a temple, a spiritual house, the, for his glory, for his purposes, for him to be worshipped, for, for, for him to be lifted up. We are all part of the construction of that house. But that house cannot be built without the most important piece of the construction that is needed. And that is the cornerstone. That is 
Jesus Christ. That's why the Apostle Paul tells us in Ephesians chapter 2, verses 20, 21, and 22. He says, together we are his house, built on the foundation of the apostles and the prophets. And the cornerstone is Christ Jesus himself. Okay. We are carefully joined together in him. Apart from him, you know what they said? What they, what they would say before in ancient, you know, in ancient, if you pulled out the cornerstone, the whole house would fall apart. Or the whole house would simply fall in on itself. That's how important the cornerstone was. And the basic thing, you know, the reality is this, apart from Christ, there is no church. So we are carefully joined together in Him. He says, becoming a holy temple for the Lord. Through Him, you Gentiles are also being made part of this dwelling where God lives by His Spirit. Christ is the cornerstone of the church. He is the stone upon which all of us are joined together, regardless of ethnicity, regardless of social standing, regardless of education, regardless of profession, regardless of any earthly difference. He is the one that makes us one. He is the one that makes us one. He is the rock upon which the church stands today. He is the source of strength, of stability of the church today. And the reason why the church has continued to move forward, has existed and flourished these last 2,000 years in spite of the many attempts to quiet the church, to kill the church, is because of the cornerstone. That is Jesus. It is the cornerstone. It is Jesus as our cornerstone that makes the church unsinkable and unshakable. You know, if you think about what the church has gone through these last 2,000 years, of how many governments have tried to exterminate it, even from its very inception, you know, when it, was, when it was birthed, okay, the Jewish, you know, they, they, they tried to exterminate it. And they used one major component, a man named Saul, okay, to quench out. Guess what happened? Saul got saved, okay? And after that, the Roman Empire, you know, the many emperors tried to quench, saw the church as a threat to the stability of the Roman Empire, and they tried to quench it. Guess what happened? The Roman Empire, all you can do, you go to Rome now, all you see is the Colosseum. But the church of Jesus Christ continues to thrive and flourish, you know, and flourish today. And all throughout the millennia, we have seen, you know, um, Ex, you know, persecution after persecution, you know, um, you know the, the communists and all that. And guess what? The, the church continues to flourish. Why? It is built upon the rock, the cornerstone that is, and his name is Jesus. Yeah, give the Lord praise for that. Just think about that. Just think about that. You know, I, you know, I look at that. I look at that. And I look, at, I look at what is going on today. You know what? I was, just reading, I was just reading an article the other day that 80%, listen, 80% of the persecute, uh, 80% of faith-based persecution that is going on in the world today, okay, is against Christians. 80% of faith-based persecution. You read about that happening in the Middle East, you read about that happening in Africa, in Nigeria, where almost all families and villages are, are, you know, are at the point of extermination because of their faith in Jesus Christ. But guess what? The church will still move forward. Why? 
You know how many of you have heard about rock and roll? You musicians, rock and roll, right? Well, guess what? The church stands on the rock that will never roll. And his name is Jesus Christ. And because it is built on Christ, the cornerstone, listen to me. The church becomes unbreakable, unshakable, and unsinkable. As long as it is built right. It's got to be built right. And like I said earlier, if, you know, if the stone, the cornerstone, normally if the cornerstone was removed, many times the, the, the whole building could or would collapse. So it tells us something very important as well. That Jesus as the cornerstone means that the church, whether universal or local, cannot be built properly apart from the Lordship of Jesus Christ. That no other foundation is acceptable when building the church because there's no jesus there's no church okay no jesus no church listen the church is not built on a vision the church is not built on the giftedness of a single personality the church is not built on a strategy the church is not built on a method the church is not built on a structure the church is built on the foundation of Jesus Christ alone. You know, I, I was reading, you know, I was, I was reading one time and somebody said this, oh, our church was built on social media. Yeah. I go, huh? So what happens if the net come, if the net falls apart? Yeah. Yeah, our church was built, you know, because we're really good on social media and all that, you know. I go, hello. What a bad foundation to build the church on. It cannot be built on any other foundation than the Lordship of Jesus Christ. Because I remember the words of Jesus when he said, if I am lifted up, he says, I will draw all men unto me. Yes, we are all part of the spiritual building that God wants to build. Okay? And that God continues to build in this world. But we have to understand one thing. There can only be one foundation. There can only be one cornerstone. And that is Christ and His Lordship over us. This church was not built okay, on any other foundation but the Lordship of Jesus Christ. This church has been through a lot. The last 20 years it has existed in this city. And the reason why it continues to move forward and it continues to flourish is because it was built on Christ the rock. It was built on the cornerstone of the Lordship of Jesus Christ. And that's something that we have to understand and that's something that the apostle, that, that's something that Peter communicates to the body of Christ then because they were going through a very difficult time. They were going through a season of extreme persecution when Peter writes this letter to the churches. And many of them were wondering what's going to happen. What's going, to go, what's going on and what's going to happen. Some of our leaders are being taken. Some of our leaders are being killed. You know, some of the brethren have simply disappeared. You know, they're losing their livelihood. They're losing their homes. And they're losing this. Peter said, don't worry, you will stand. Why? Because you are built on the rock. Jesus is the cornerstone. And as long as he continues to remain the cornerstone of the church and the cornerstone of our lives, we will stand no matter what storm may come our way. Peter says this, as the scriptures say, I am placing a cornerstone in Jerusalem. And that cornerstone is Jesus, chosen for great honor. And anyone, who, who is anyone, anyone here? 
Who's anyone here? Okay, anyone. Okay, anyone who trusts in Him will never be disgraced. Anyone who trusts in Him will never be disgraced. Christ is the cornerstone of the church. And if the church is to be built right, it must be built on the cornerstone of the Lordship of Jesus Christ. But understand one thing as well. Christ came to be your cornerstone. And for you to build your life on the foundation of His Lordship. Of the finished work that He did on the cross and of His Lordship. Christ came to be your cornerstone. You know... And He invites you. He invites you to come to Him. He invites you to trust Him. He invites you to accept His Lordship over your life and to watch Him square your life away. You know, a cornerstone gave the building stability. A cornerstone gave the building strength. A cornerstone gave the building, in a sense, direction. Without the cornerstone the purpose of the building would not be fulfilled. Without the cornerstone, the potential of the building would never be achieved. Okay? Because if without the proper cornerstone and without building it in accordance with the cornerstone, the building would be you know, haphazard. It would not be built right. And you see, we have many people today who are building their lives, not their, they're not building their lives the right way. Many outside the church, but many inside the church as well, who are not building their lives the right way. They think that they can build their lives in accordance with their plans rather than God's plans. Their way rather than God's way. And many times they find out too late that their lives are not properly squared away. That something is wrong. To make Christ your cornerstone, to trust Him as your cornerstone, is to recognize that a properly squared life, be it spiritual, be it marital, relational, material, financial, even in ministry, you recognize that your life will never be properly squared away if it is not built, if it is built apart from the Lordship of Christ. That he must be your cornerstone. You know, I look in my life. I, I was, I was, I was doing. My, you know, I was, I, I was preparing for this. I look at my life. In a couple of months, I'll be fifty-four. In two months' time, I'll be fifty-four. Can you believe that? Wow. Wow. I'm still young, huh? Okay. Although sometimes you don't feel like that. Yeah, but in two months' time, I'll be 54. Okay. 35 years ago, 35 years ago, next Sunday, May 12, 1985, or 34, I don't know. Yeah. 34 years ago, I gave my life to Jesus Christ. I trusted Him to be my Savior, to be my Lord. I surrendered my life to Him to be my Lord. I made Him the cornerstone upon which my life would be built. And as I look back at what I was prior to Him coming into my life, I shudder to think what I would be today if I did not have him as my cornerstone. I shudder to think what I would be today. Where I would be, I certainly would not be here. I don't think I would still be alive. Okay. I don't think I would be, you know, I would be 
married for 27 years to this lovely lady over here. Okay, I don't think I would have three wonderful sons. I don't think I would, you know, I would, I would enjoy and experience the many things that I have experienced and enjoyed. Has it been easy? No, it's not been easy. Have there been challenges? Yes, there have been challenges. Has there been pain? Yes, there has been pain. Have there been storms? Yes, there have been storms. Early on, early on, within six months of my coming to Christ, a major storm hits us with our, my mother being murdered. Victim of a violent crime. Okay. Early on in our relationship with Sister Babette, we go, through the, we go through another storm of the plane of her father crashing in open sea, and they've never found the body ever since. Yeah, it, there have been. There have been challenges. There, have been hindred, there, have been, there has been pain, you know, and all that. But I, I, honestly, I tell you this. You know, when it says that, you know, anyone who trusts in him will never be disgraced, that is the reality. When we look back at the 30 plus years that we have made Christ our cornerstone, we can look back and we can say it was honestly worth it. Because why? We have seen so much more than what we ever expected. And not only that, our, you know, we will never, be, we will never ever be disgraced. I mean, how about you? I mean let, me, let, me, let me see a show of hands, okay? Those of you who have lived long enough and followed Christ long enough, how many of you can honestly say that because Christ is your cornerstone, your life is so much better today? Your life is so much better today. And the invitation is this, trust Him. No matter what it is that you may be going through, continue to trust Him. Continue to hold on to Him. Don't let go of that. Build your life on the foundation of the Lordship of Christ. That no matter what happens, He is Lord. The wind may be strong, the waves may be high. He continues to be my Lord. Have I failed? Yes, I have in the 30 plus years. Have I sinned? Yes, I have. Because when you build your life upon the Lordship of Christ as the cornerstone, it doesn't mean that you will live a perfect life. It simply means that you will always stand up and go back to the cornerstone and start again. Why? As long as the cornerstone is there, there is always new beginnings. There is always a fresh start that is offered to those who fail. To build your life on the cornerstone that is Jesus Christ means that yes, you acknowledge your mistakes, you acknowledge your sin, but then you repent and submit, yield to yourself once again to the Lordship of Christ. To build your life on the foundation of the Lordship of Christ means that you allow Him to do what He wants to shape you and to mold you, to correct you, to confront you. says this, anyone who trusts him will never, everybody say never. never. Turn to somebody and say never. never. Listen to me, that word never in the original Greek is powerful. You know what it means? Never. Never. Turn to somebody and say never. It, will you be disgraced? It ain't gonna happen, and, and uh, you know, as long as you continue to trust in Him. And again, this was needed. This was a needed message to the recipients of Peter's letter. They were going through a period of severe persecution. Probably some of them were wondering, hey, Peter, is it going to be worth it? Is our suffering going to be worth it? Is our pain going to be worth it? Is our disappointment going to be worth it? Is our frustration going to be worth it? Peter says, hold on. Stay on the foundation of the Lordship of Christ because you will never 
be disgraced. You may be going through a tough time now. Your faith may be challenged today, health-wise, financially, relationally, maritally, professionally. Listen to this. If you, Jesus Christ is your cornerstone and you build your life on that, you will stand. You will see God's purposes fulfilled. Don't build your life on the sinking sand that the world offers. Don't build your life on the foundation that this world offers. Don't build your life on finances or money. Don't build your life on possessions. Don't build your life on relationships. We enjoy all of that, okay? But that is not stable. That is, you know, that's shifting sands. And guess what? You will be disappointed. If you build your life on the accumulation of wealth, you will be disappointed. Why? There will always be somebody who has more than you. Okay? If you build your life, you know, if you build your life on, on, on physical beauty, guess what? There will always be somebody who's better looking than you. That's the reality. It's something I've come to accept. Okay? Hard as it may be. Okay. Yeah. If you build your life on education, on intelligence, there will always be somebody who's smarter than you. There will always be somebody who's got a faster car than you. Yeah. There will always be. There will always be. So you will be disappointed. But if you build your life on the foundation that is Jesus Christ and make him your cornerstone, at the end of the day, you look back, you will say, it was so worth it. It was so, so worth it. As long as we place our trust on our unshakable, unsinkable, unbreakable cornerstone, listen, we become unshakable, unsinkable, and unbreakable as well. You know, I like the way the Passion Translation puts it. Whoever believes in Him will certainly not be disappointed. A little change. Okay? This promise is not just for the future, this promise is for the present. But the reality is this, brothers and sisters, it will always be worth it when you place your trust in Jesus Christ, when you make him the cornerstone of your salvation, the cornerstone of your life. At the end of the day, when you stand before your creator and you look back, because he was your cornerstone, you will say it is worth it it was worth it but even today 30 plus years after i made him you know i came to him you know and, and i allowed him to come into my life i ac i accepted him and i asked him to forgive my sins and to be lord of my life i look back okay and i can honestly say it was worth it it wasn't easy okay but it was worth it So let me ask you this today. Have you made Jesus Christ your cornerstone? Is your life built on the foundation of his lordship? John MacArthur writes this. To every human being, Christ is either the means of salvation if they believe or the means of judgment if they reject the gospel. He is like a stone in the road that causes a traveler to fall. When we read the words of St. Peter here in 1 Peter chapter 2, verses 4 to 8, <clears throat> we are left with two choices. We only have two choices when it comes to Jesus Christ. We either make him our cornerstone or we make him a stumbling stone. 
We either accept him or reject him. To accept him is to make him our cornerstone. To reject him is to make him the stumbling stone. But that is entirely up to you. The choice is ours. The choice has always been ours. Will we place our faith in him? Faith in the work that he did for us on the cross of Calvary. Faith in his resurrection and his lordship. Or reject him and say, no, I want to live my life my way, not your way. I've asked, you know, I've asked the worship team to prepare this song, and I'd like to invite you to worship with us um, through this song as we meditate upon this particular message that the Lord has, um, that the Lord has given us today. We all know the song. It's entitled Cornerstone. Please worship with us. You can stand, you can sit, you can kneel or whatever, but please worship with us this morning through this song.
trumpet sound. Oh, may I then in Him be found. Why we all stand as, as we worship the Lord? Dress in His righteousness alone, and faultless stand before the throne. Let's sing it again when when He shall come. second chances and he wants to help you make it right and build it right that's why he sent Jesus it's never too late it's never too late build your life right build your marriages right build your careers right Build your ministry right. Build it on the foundation, the cornerstone of the Lordship of Christ over your lives. And you'll never go wrong. You will never, ever go wrong. Because you are building it the right way. No shortcuts. You are building it the right way. Hallelujah. So, Father, we just come to you today and we just yield ourselves to you, Lord. Jesus, you are our cornerstone. You're the cornerstone not only of this church, but you're the cornerstone of our lives, Lord God. You're the foundation upon which this church has been built on. You're the foundation upon which our lives, our marriages, our families, our careers, our dreams, our ambitions, our finances will be built on, Lord. And we know, Lord God, that yes, there will be challenges, but as we stay true to the foundation, as we, as we stay true to the cornerstone, we will build it right. We will build it the right way. And we will never be disappointed. We will never be disgraced. So we thank you, Jesus, that you came to set things right in our lives. And we just yield ourselves to you. Hallelujah. Thank you. Thank you. 
Jesus' name we pray. And everybody would say, Amen. 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 Hallelujah.